Welcome to Spotlight on Kill Devil Hills. I am Mayor Sheila Davies. I would like to take a few moments to provide brief highlights of the May and June Kill Devil Hills Board of Commissioners meetings. At the May 21st Board of Commissioners meeting, the board was introduced to the 2014 Ocean Rescue Lifeguard staff. The board adopted proclamations declaring June 1st through the 8th as Beach Safety and Rip Current Awareness Week. The board used the remainder of the meeting as a workshop to review the coming year's budget by line item. At the June 9th meeting, the board held two public hearings. The first public hearing was on the conditional site plan for the Kill Devil Hills Wastewater Treatment Plant. There were several speakers at the public hearing and the board approved the site plan. The board also requested the treatment plant owners and operators to address plant repairs to the fume scrubber and the cover to mitigate odor concerns. The second public hearing was on the proposed 2014-2015 town budget. There was one speaker at this public hearing. The board scheduled a second budget workshop for June 16th. Under introductions and presentations, Bob Schiffer from Saga Construction presented the life-saving award to the town of Kittleville Hills for the heroic efforts of several police officers who used automated external defibrillators to assist victims in cardiac arrest. Under new business, the board took the following actions. First, the board repealed the Fire Station Capital Project Ordinance. Second, the board received an update from Ken Wilson with Coastal Planning and Engineering on the Beach Nourishment Project. Third, the board approved regulations for decorative commercial flags at businesses to address the replacement of damaged flags. At the June 25th Board of Commissioners meeting, the board approved the 2014-2015 budget. This budget includes a three cent tax increase and funds several necessary items to ensure the town services are maintained at the same level as currently provided. This includes construction of a new public works garage. The existing town garage poses safety hazards and is in need of significant repairs and upgrades. Had the board chosen not to fund the new construction, significant additional costs would have been incurred in an attempt to maintain the facility. Leases for several town vehicles were included in this budget to replace older vehicles with frequent service issues. This budget also establishes and funds a new sidewalk and multi-use path capital fund. This enables the town to continue sidewalk installation along the 158 bypass, as well as develop funding plans to continue the path along Bay Drive and other heavily used pedestrian pathways. Between the two budget workshops, the public hearing on the budget, and the public comment at the meeting when the budget was approved, the board heard from only three citizens. My fellow board members and I are committed to making decisions that are in the best interest of our town. When it comes to budgets, there are tough decisions that have to be made to either raise money to support important functions in our town or reduce services. In the future, I strongly encourage our citizens to engage with us as we work on the town's budget. Adopting a budget is the biggest responsibility the Board of Commissioners performs. Although it affects everyone in our community, it is often one of the items that we receive the least input from our citizens. Your suggestions are extremely valuable in our decision-making process. Also during the June 25th meeting, the Board took the following actions. First, the Board approved an amendment to establish a new payment schedule for certain adjusted water bill amounts. This was in direct response to a citizen's plight where an undiscovered leak resulted in a water bill of over $3,000. Second, the board approved an amendment to Chapter 110 of the Town Code to incorporate a new requirement from the North Carolina General Assembly that most businesses be physically located within a municipality to be charged a business license tax. Third, the board scheduled a public hearing for the July 14th meeting on a proposed zoning amendment to provide long-term buffer protection to property owners adjacent commercial establishments. Fourth, the board reappointed Ron Seidman as an alternate to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Copies of these meetings, as well as previous meetings of the Kill Devil Hills Board of Commissioners, can be watched in their entirety on the town's YouTube site or by obtaining a DVD copy of the meeting from the Dare County Library in Kill Devil Hills. Current meetings are also aired on the Government Channel. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to email me or any of my fellow board members. Email addresses for all of us can be found on the town's website at kdhnc.com. 
The next regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners will be on Monday, July 14th at 5.30 p.m. Thank you.